Wetlands are an immensely important natural resource and amongst the most biodiverse and productive ecosystems. The global economic value of all our natural ecosystems is estimated at 33 trillion US dollars, with wetland ecosystems making up about 45% of this total. This value is a consequence of the various functions that wetlands perform. They can help to control flooding downstream by storing water during heavy rainfall and releasing it slowly rather than in one big flood. By storing water, they also encourage more rainfall to infiltrate the soil and add to our groundwater resources. In coastal areas, they stabilize the shoreline and give protection from storms. Wetlands also buffer the movement of sediment and nutrients through the environment, preventing pulses of pollution from reaching rivers. They also filter and purify water, an attribute that is used in some cases for treating wastewater from houses and from industry. Wetlands store carbon, thus reducing the effects of global warming. They also provide habitats for a wide range of species of fish, birds and insects. Around the world, wetlands also provide a range of products that people rely on for their livelihoods. Reeds for building materials, fish and other animals, medicinal plants, firewood and so on. Wetlands are beautiful places that people like to visit for recreation and to go fishing or boating on, for example. In many places, wetlands also have a deep cultural and historical significance. Because the benefits that wetlands provide have been ignored or poorly understood, their value has often gone unrecognized and wetlands are not well protected by legislation. They are frequently seen as unproductive lands and are drained for conversion to agriculture or housing. or the water that sustains them is diverted and used for irrigation, drinking water or industry. Areas like this would have had many wetlands. The remaining wetlands are indicated by the presence of wetland species like Phragmites, which can be seen here following the course of a river. Pollution from sewage and refuse is also a problem. Sewage pollution causes eutrophication, which results in the growth of algae and a loss of biodiversity.
Wetlands are also seen as a breeding ground for mosquitoes and a source of malaria. In the past, they were dried up by using various management practices. One of the methods used was to plant eucalyptus trees. Today, stands of eucalyptus often indicate the presence of former wetlands that have been drained. A ten-year-old eucalyptus can suck 40 tons of groundwater during a dry period, whereas an apple tree can suck only about one ton of groundwater. Establishing a plantation of eucalyptus is a very effective way of drying out a wetland. In just a few decades, these wetlands planted with eucalyptus can be dried out and the water table lowered, leaving a dry, barren land behind. The insecticide DDT, that was also used heavily to kill mosquitoes, but also kills insects indiscriminately and affects the whole ecosystem. For example, some plants have a symbiotic relationship with insects, and once the insects are gone, the plants don't get pollinated. Today, insecticides and other forms of biological control are still applied to control mosquitoes. Although they are less damaging than DDT, they can still affect the wetland ecosystem. Despite being a dry country, historically Cyprus had many wetlands, both freshwater and saltwater. But the degradation of wetlands through pollution, mosquito management, increased use of water, and conversion for agriculture and building land have led to the loss of much of the original wetland area. Many of the freshwater wetlands have been lost, although some important wetlands, like Famagusta Freshwater Lake, still remain. More of the saltwater wetlands, such as those at Larnaca and Akrotiri, have remained more or less intact. One of the solutions to the shortage of water in Cyprus over the past few decades has been the construction of reservoirs in order to store water during the winter when there is more rain and increase its availability throughout the year. Water is either abstracted directly from the reservoirs or the reservoirs are used to recharge groundwater so that abstractions can be made elsewhere from the aquifer. Although their original purpose was as a solution to water resource issues, it is becoming clear that the artificial wetlands formed by these recently constructed reservoirs have become key sites for biodiversity, especially birds, and could replace some of the functions of the natural wetlands that have been lost. The particular importance of such sites for wintering and breeding of migratory birds is a result of the strategic location of Cyprus on the intersection of waterfowl migration routes between Eurasia and Africa. By increasing the marginal waterside and aquatic vegetation habitats, these wetlands provide additional feeding and resting areas, and create nesting sites for ducks, gallinules, and open shores and islets for nesting waders. This spur-winged plover at Famagusta Freshwater Lake is a very rare bird for Cyprus. Across the Mediterranean basin, it is estimated that two billion migratory birds of some 150 species use wetlands as a stopover site on their migration between Eurasia and Africa. These artificial wetland sites are also important for invertebrates and wetland plant species and the introduction of fish has then made them important recreation sites for fishing. If managed well and with a wider perspective than simply water resource objectives, artificial wetlands can provide a lot of additional benefits. To ensure that management of these wetlands can provide sufficient water resources and at the same time make the most of the potential environmental and societal benefits, we need to understand their ecology much better. With the support of the United Nations Development Programme, a team of environmental scientists have been studying the ecology of some of Cyprus's artificial wetlands and comparing them to natural wetlands. 
The Macau Project, which stands for Management and Assessment of the Ecology of Cyprus's Artificial Wetlands, aims to increase our understanding of the value of artificial wetlands in Cyprus and improve their management. This is being achieved by monitoring the biodiversity of plants, insects and birds at a number of wetland sites and using this information to make recommendations on how to manage these sites. The sites being studied are the Achna Dam, the Oroklini Lake, a wetland on the Ronas River and an artificial wetland at Gechitkoi. Project partners hope that their efforts will help to secure a future for Cyprus's wetlands. The partners for the project are the Nature Conservation Unit of the Frederick Institute of Technology, BirdLife Cyprus, the Earth, Sea, Atmosphere and Environmental Sciences Institute of the Near East University, the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences of the European University of Lefke, and the Institute for Sustainable Water, Integrated Management and Ecosystem Research, known as SWIMMER, at the University of Liverpool.